Welcome to today's print. Today we are going to put upgrades onto my Creality Ender 5. We're going to put at minimum TL smoothers and if it looks like it's reasonably easy to do we're going to add some stepper dampers to it. I don't think it actually needs stepper dampers but if I can add them easily why not? So stay tuned. So I've determined it's worthy of the upgrades because I put a 0.2 millimeter nozzle on this thing and I am just getting some ridiculously insane prints out of this thing. That's the little rose for your girl vase, print super tiny. Remember the proto gnome and the, the guy for Wellbot made the um, little Haribo gnome? Well there's a little Haribo gnome, itty bitty little critter. And that's hollow in vase mode. And of course my ultra super teeny tiny Benji. <laughs> the other thing we're going to add to this printer is I want to add a cooling upgrade because it needs better cooling for the um, to print these tiny parts. As you can see, the top of that stack got pretty melted. But that's going to have to come later. I had to order some fans for it. I need some good 5015 fans to put on for my pet's fang. So let's get started on upgrading this printer. Today's video is going to primarily be TL smoothers because I definitely have some salmon skin and it's more noticeable when you're making a print this big. Um, so we're gonna get rid of most of that salmon skin by installing TL Smoothers. TL Smoothers, they usually come as three packs, 13 or $14, they're very cheap, they don't cost a lot of money. Amazon link down below. But they look like this. And they come with a little patch cable. These go inside the brain box. Uh, as long as your printer is a standard printer that uses a standard four pin connection on the brain board, these are a simple pass through plug and play. You plug this cable into one end, this plugs into your brain board, and then the wire you removed from the brain board to plug this in goes into the smoother. They are bi directional, so it doesn't matter which way you plug them in. I use a simple piece of, um, I don't have it handy, double stick tape to attach it to the inside of the print board that will keep it in place, keep it from moving around, and also keep it from shorting out on anything. And that's it, you just plug them in. Get the eight diode ones like this, and you're good to go. If you have a non-standard printer, you can buy you know wire extensions and cut the ends off to make adapters. So for example, if you have a six pin plug on a brain board, or if you have a proprietary connection on the brain board and you need to plug it in at the stepper end, you can do that as well. It's a little more difficult, but not that much more difficult. Um, but the trick is you have to have one end be this four pin plug, the wire that goes to this be a four pin plug, and then this end has to be whatever it is your stepper takes. So you just have to replace that. It's always going to be four wires, but you may have to replace this actual end cap here with something else. So for example, on the GTEC printers, you'd have to either use a, a step stick version of these, and that's where you remove the stepper driver, plug in the smoother into the stepper driver socket, and then you plug the stepper driver back into that as a pass-through. They actually make those. TH3 has them. And or you need to adapt this to be whatever wire configuration the printer uses. So on the GTEC printers, it's easier to do it at the stepper, and it's a six-pin wire. So basically, I take the six-pin connection off of the um, the stepper wire, and I take this connection off of here, and I put that six pin connection on here, and I put the four pin connection that was on here on the wire coming out of the brain board so that it'll plug into the here, and then this will plug into here. You can try removing these plugs, but it's a whole lot easier if you just take your snips and cut the wire right here, and then resort the wires, keeping the colors the same. That's a whole lot easier. <laughs> so you just snip the wire off halfway here, snip about two inches off of your stepper wire cable and then you solder your stepper wire cable onto this plug and then you solder this plug onto your stepper wire cable and now that'll plug into here and this will plug into the stepper but this printer is standardized simple four pin connection at the brain board so all we're going to have to do is plug and play so stay tuned i'm going to crack this thing open and show you guys what's inside oh yeah this spool holder is supposed to be facing out perpendicular to this face of the printer but then it takes a lot more space because it comes out to about here, okay? You can cut that down to the point where the spool holder does not come out past the edge of the screen here by mounting the spool holder this way, sideways, with the spool going out. But you do have to make one little change. You have to make sure you zip tie 
this cable going to your Y axis up top here to the inside of the frame of the spool holder because what you don't want is for this X axis to come forward this wire to get around the spool and then it goes the other way so by securing the wire to the spool holder that now cannot happen and now you have a nice clean entry point right into the feeder assembly and this is nice and compact and it does not come out past here which is really nice it makes the printer take up a lot less space four bolts two and two holding this plate on the bottom of the printer do be careful when you pull this off this connection right next to the terminal block here that is your fan we will be replacing that at some point in the future as well is that a 40 millimeter or a 30 millimeter Looks good. It's a 40, so that's a standard 4010, so it's like 12 bucks to get a replacement fan for that. We will be replacing that, but that's in a future video because we have to install buck converters to down convert the 24 volts to 12 volts. So it's pretty open in here. There's a whole lot of space, and we are going to be replacing X, Y, and extruder. Because of the spacing, I'm probably going to put one of them here for X, and then Y and extruder I'll put right here I'm thinking about putting I was thinking about putting dampers on Z but I'm getting ridiculous quality prints at 0 0.04 millimeter layer height so I don't want to mess with that I don't think it's necessary because the Z is not in continuous motion it just moves in steps I'll have to look into that further, but if you're going to be doing ultra, ultra high resolution printers, there might be some value to putting a uh, TL smoother on the Z axis, but as of right now, I don't think so, so I'm not going to. Although, I have a ton of them, so why not? We're going to put one on Z2 just to see what happens, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> so, you would basically unplug your stepper motor which is this connect oh, some of these might have a little hot glue on them which you will have to peel away in order to gain access to these plugs there we go there we go they just have a little hot glue on them to keep them in there which is not a bad idea it doesn't really cause too much of a problem and it is better security so I unplugged the extruder stepper this is already plugged into here I plug this into here and then I plug the extruder stepper back into the smoother that's it that's literally all there is to it all the rest of your work is just simply um, you might want to pull these cables through a little bit is simply mounting these things in here that's all the rest of your work is is mounting these things there's nothing else to it they are that simple it's plug and play let me show you that again You take your selected stepper, you plug this into one end of this, you unplug your stepper, you plug this into where the stepper was plugged in, and then you plug the stepper into the smoother. So it's literally just a pass-through. That's all it is. It, it's that simple. There's nothing else to it. Um, but make sure you do X, Y, and E. We're going to do all four just because I have like 50 of these things. Um, so I want to see if it makes a difference. But that's it. In a future video, I will also show you how to replace the fan inside the meanwhile power supplies. They're a little noisy. Not always, but we can make them quieter. I have 60 millimeter replacement fans that are nice and quiet. But that's it. That's all there is to it. Now we mount it. So stay tuned, and I want to get the double-sided tape ready and get the other smoothers ready. My trusty 3M VHB tape, the very high temperature outdoor extreme version. You could buy small things for like three or four bucks on Amazon or Home Depot. I'll have a link down below. Or just do what I do, buy a big roll. It's cheaper per foot, and you're going to find a lot of uses for this, for building 3D prints, attaching 3D prints, for doing stuff like this. These are This is just handy stuff. Very, very good, very sticky. You can 3D print enclosures and stuff like this, but I don't suggest that. Two reasons. One, it's a pain in the ass. Two, you want airflow. These things, these are diodes. They will produce some heat. And they will generate heat because they have resistance. So you just stick them in here. Being careful to make sure they can actually reach your plugs and whatnot, wherever you can stick them, and go from there. For example, you can even stick one along the side of the power supply here. I don't personally advise that because then it's attached. If you ever remove the power supply, you've got to unplug this. But you can put them basically anywhere. You know, on this side of the frame here, like on Z or E, I will probably put right along the side of the frame here so that I can put Y and Z right here, and then put E on the side here, and then put X over here. But um, 
you just put a piece of double sided tape on there make sure it goes the full length because you want to cover up those solder contacts so it doesn't short out on the frame of your machine but that'll shock absorb it that'll stick it and that'll also insulate it stay tuned and we'll put these in here there we go let me show you what i have here can i zoom in on this oh no zoom is not supported so i have two here i have one on the side of the frame here and i have one up here now i kept the ends all pretty close to the um, plugs for the um, steppers because these wires aren't that long i did remove this one zip tie so this wire could come back here a little more and then i just added a second zip tie and I will simply, actually I don't want the zip tie to include that. The zip tie, I have it including too many wires. It should not include the power wires because they route differently. And then I will restore the wire management as close to what it was. There we go. So now our wire management is still neat and orderly. All the Step TL smoothers are plugged in. This wire goes around the power supply like this because I believe this power supply almost touches the bottom of the case. Not quite, but close. And that's it. So now we have decent airflow. The air coming off of this pulls air out of the case here while it draws air in from the sides, which means that air will flow over these TL smoothers as well. I've put them in pretty tight quarters. I've never had them overheat or cause me a problem, but if you can facilitate airflow, you might as well. So I have four of them in here for all four steppers. So we will see if Z has any visually noticeable improvement by doing that. To reassemble, don't forget to plug in this fan. That goes here like this. There you go. And now we just reinstall this and we're good to go. That's it. Um, stay tuned for pictures on my Twitter where I'll show you what kind of improvements I get. It could take a few hours for me to make a couple of prints and see if I have any tangible improvement. But that's all there is to it. Very, very simple to install TL smoothers. They are plug and play for the vast majority of printers out there. You guys have a great night.